Hello everybody, welcome to Movies by McManus, the channel where we break down movies, comics, TV, books, whatever type of media you're into, in the context of who created it and what effect it's trying to have on the world. I'm your host Greg, and this week we're going to be talking about the 1990 book The Westies by TJ English. Now, normally, I wouldn't cover a book this old, but being Irish, a New Yorker, and a fan of TJ English, this was a book that I really wanted to cover. But if you would like to read something more recent, TJ English's newest book, The Corporation, covers a lot of the same themes as the Westies, but with the Cuban mob instead of the Irish mob. So let's start by talking about who the Westies were. The Westies was a name given by the media and the NYPD to a mostly Irish gang that became the main organized crime presence in the Manhattan neighborhood of Hell's Kitchen during the late 70s and 80s. The Westies were led by gangster Jimmy Coonan, who rose to power on the west side of Manhattan, mostly because he aligned himself with the Italian Mafia, specifically the Gambino crime family. Now, by the late 70s, there wasn't much of an Irish mob in New York. All the Irish gangsters of Prohibition and the doc bosses of the 1940s were all either dead, in prison, or, if they were lucky enough, retired. Whatever was left of the old Irish mob was run by a man named Mickey Spillane, who was just barely holding on to this criminal enterprise that started during Prohibition. During this time, Hell's Kitchen was also vastly changing. What was once the roughest neighborhood in New York City was now in the early stages of gentrification. And the working class Irish citizens that once lived in Hell's Kitchen were all quickly leaving the neighborhood. It's around this time that Jimmy Coonan and his gang the Westies rose to power. And while the majority of the Westies looked and acted like typical street thugs, Jimmy Coonan stylized himself after the upscale and well-dressed bosses of the Italian Mafia. Coonan also planned on running his gang closer to how the Italian Mafia was run rather than the typical Irish gangs. The Italian Mafia was run with a strict set of rules and a structured hierarchy with a process of how new members would be introduced and a clear path of how a criminal could rise up the ranks. With this structure, the Italians created an organization that could be easily passed on from one generation to the next. But the Irish mob had always acted a bit more loose than that. While there have always been bosses in the Irish mob, there was no strict hierarchy and no clear line separating who was in the gang and who wasn't. And Jimmy Coonan saw this as the reason why they were falling apart. Jimmy Coonan was not only stylizing himself after the Italians and organizing his gang much like they were, but he also made an alliance with mafioso Roy DeMeo along with the Gambino crime family. And with the power of the Gambinos behind him, he was able to take out Mickey Spillane and become the boss of Hell's Kitchen. Now, throughout the years, organized crime has been justified as a necessary evil for preserving an ethnic group's culture and elevating said group up the American social ladder a theme that is very present in pretty much all of T.J. English's books. In his most recent book, The Corporation, T.J. English talks about Jose Miguel Battle, who led a gang of Cuban refugees that escaped Fidel Castro in the 60s and 70s. Battle and his gang brought to America the illegal racket of Bolita, as a way to sort of preserve their Cuban heritage and to bring money into the newly formed Cuban communities. This also has been used to justify the Mafia, specifically by characters like Tony Soprano, who say that the mob is their way of staying Italian in a country that's forcing them to assimilate. 
But what happens to organized crime when a group like Irish Americans have already been assimilated into their new country? With the old Irish bosses, the goal was very clear. Elevate the poor working class Irish, up the ladder of society, and into the middle class. Once that elevation takes place, there's no more need for organized crime. The Italian Mafia is obviously an exception, since there was a clear structure that could be passed down from generation to generation. It was able to strive way past Italians had moved up the social hierarchy. But other groups like the Jewish and Cuban mobs mostly disappeared. And in the late 70s, when Jimmy Coonan took over, it looked like the Irish mob was going to do the same. So it seems as though Jimmy Coonan and his gang are coming in at the end of things and trying to create an organized crime empire during a time and a place where there really was no need for one. Because of this, Coonan and the Westies did not receive the same respect and admiration from their neighborhood that older gangsters like Mickey Spillane and Eddie McGrath did, but instead were viewed as a menace. Coonan was given the reputation as a violent psychopath. One for his murder of Spillane, who was all but retired from the gangster life and no real threat to Coonan and two for his murder of Harold Whitehead, who he shot in a bathroom bar after Whitehead insulted Coonan's mother. But not only did Coonan not get the neighborhood respect like the old bosses did, but wasn't even really respected by his own gang members. While the old Irish mobsters of the 20s and 30s wanted to rise up the social ladder so that their children and their grandchildren wouldn't have to grow up poor like they did, the newer gangsters of the 70s and 80s had no such admiration. Coonan's problem was that he was trying to copy the Italian mafia and create an organization that can be passed on. But since the Irish had already gone up from poor to middle class, there was really no need for this. The newer gangsters were fine with earning just enough money to cover their bar tabs and drug habits. And whatever working class camaraderie that might have existed had been long gone. By trying to be more Italian and creating new rules and structures around his organization, Coonan's men became unhappy with him. For most of the gang, the entire reason they became criminals is because they didn't want to follow the rules. And by becoming closer to the Gambino crime family, many of the Irish gangsters felt that Coonan was selling out the neighborhood to the Italians, especially his second-in-command, Mickey Featherstone, who started to distance himself from the gang. Coonan began to see his second-in-command as a threat, but since Mickey Featherstone was well-liked amongst the gang, rather than killing him and creating chaos, Coonan had Featherstone framed for murder. This couldn't have backfired worse. After Featherstone realized he had been set up by his boss, he turned government informant and testified against Coonan and his fellow Westies. With no real loyalty to their leader, the gang quickly turned on each other, and Jimmy Coonan is tried and sentenced to 75 years in prison in 1988. What was left of the Irish mob in New York quickly disappeared, and today, Hell's Kitchen would be almost unrecognizable to the old Irish gangsters that once populated the neighborhood. In the end, gentrification won. Tenements were replaced with condos, the Irish working class were displaced, and more affluent residents moved in. Now, Hell's Kitchen is one of the most expensive neighborhoods in all of New York City. But maybe this is a good thing. Maybe the fact that we no longer need an Irish mob means that we finally have risen up the social ladder. But what do you think of the Westies and TJ English as an author? Leave a comment and let us know your thoughts. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel, check out our podcast, and follow us on social media at Movies by McManus. I'm your host, Greg, and have a good night.